If you want to use in-game commands or take advantage of 7 Days to Die's permission system, which I like a lot by the way, you'll need to set admins on the server. So let's get into it. First step, as usual, start up your server first. I recommend first checking out your game settings, making sure all of the world gen and gameplay settings are where you want them, and then start up the server to let it generate your world and all the necessary files. 7 Days to Die world gen can take a while, so keep that in mind if you aren't using one of the pre-generated worlds. Once that's done, you can go ahead and stop the server so that we can work on the next step. You're going to need the Steam ID 64 of every admin you're wanting to add. You can find the Steam 64 ID by using any of several online tools. Once you have the Steam ID 64, go back to your control panel and into the file manager. Find the folder called Saves. Inside, you should see a file called serveradmin.xml. That's the file we're going to be altering. Look for the section that begins with Admins. See this line? This is an example of how the admin line needs to look. I recommend copying this line and pasting it below so that you have a fresh copy for each new admin you may add in the future. Let's go ahead and delete the comment characters on the front and back. These characters just tell the game to ignore that line when reading the file. Once you remove that, you should see your line change to green, red, and yellow text, which means the game is going to read this line. Replace the example line's Steam64 ID with the one of the new admin. You can also set the permission level of the admin here. I'll go into how to set up your permission system at the end. For now, zero is the default highest level and has access to all of the commands. Another tip, if you have several admins that are being added to this file, use the comment characters to your advantage. I did this by adding the comment characters and entering the player name above the actual admin line. That way I can keep track of who is who, which will make it easier to add permissions later. Be sure to save the file and then restart the server for your changes to take effect. Now for the permission system. The way this system works is by assigning each command a level from 0 to 1000, 0 being the highest level with access to all of the commands, and 1000 being the lowest. Admins can use any command that is from their level to 1000. For example, an admin that is set to 700 can now use any commands level 700 to 1000. This is highly customizable. If you have the command thirsty set to 700, any admin between 0 and 700 can use it. An admin with the level 701, however, wouldn't be able to use this command. I'm actually a huge fan of this system, so let's get into how to get this set up. Anyways, to set server commands to a certain level, go back to the file serveradmin.xml. Look for the section labeled permissions. You'll see a few commands already here, as well as some example lines you can use to add new commands. Make sure that you're typing the new line above this permissions line, as that marks the end of the permissions list. Just replace the text in quotes with the command and set the permission level in the same way. Don't forget to assign your admins to these levels as well. Make sure to save any changes you made to this file. After restarting the server, your admins and permission levels should be good to go. Also, if you're a noob like me, you can use the F1 key to open up the command console. You're welcome. Now you can get back to killing zombies and trying your best to survive. Don't die, have fun, bye!